Hi everyone. This is uh, block, let me see, one, two, three, four, five. This is block six of the Angels Block of the Month, Tula Pink Fabric. And this one is all applique. And I have mine all set up. So you're going to get all, all kinds of flowers and pieces with your watering can and some leaves. And you can set yours however you'd like. But I was just going to give you a little run through of how I did mine. The first thing you want to remember is you want to be away from the edge, I'd say about an inch. Um, I think your piece is going to be a little larger than it needs to be because when you do your applique, it might pull in a little. So the, f the finished size is going to be 12 and a half by 12 and a half or 12 and a half square. So you want to make sure you're in far enough. And I'm going to say about an inch or so, but measure your square. So if your square is like 13 inches, come in an inch. Uh, because you're going to have a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around when you're done. So I'll give you a little visual of mine. My can, my watering can, uh, was put on last except for this little leaf right here. See how I have that little leaf is going over the can. So let me just move this over here. I'm going to set some of these uh, down. Now you want to make sure that you take all your paper off the back before you begin. Don't set things down and then uh, with the paper on them and then think you're going to pick it back up and put it back down again. First of all, th that's a waste of time. Second of all, it's when you take the paper off, it's sticky behind, behind here, so it's going to stick down for you. Now you'll see this part of a flower, and that's because I have it behind the... I have it behind the watering can, and um, so I'm, I may cut off even more of that flower because I don't need like three layers of flowers. You can if you want to. And I'm just going to set these out. To give you an idea of how I went about this. And I'm going to set the, I'm going to set that one I just took off with my watering can, because that reminds me it went with the watering can, along with this little leaf. And just take the other leaves out. Now I may put this back the same way I had it. I have, I have no idea. It doesn't matter. I just want it to look pretty. So the first thing I did is, even though my watering can's going to be uh, on top of everything, I wanted to put my watering can down first, just to get an idea of where my flowers are going to be. So I'm an inch away from the right side, an inch away from the top, and I'm tilting down like I'm watering the flowers. And you can tilt it however you want. I'm looking at this from over on the side, so I'm doing it so you can see it. So it's a, I, I can't tell if it's exactly tilted. Let me, yeah, that looks good. Then I took the biggest flower, and I just grabbed a center for it, and I put that one about there. Again, I want to be an inch away. And stick your center on. You may move the center uh, circle um, left, right, uh, or wherever, depending on where the flower is that's, that's going next to it. So then I want, um, let's see. I think this fellow's over here. So I'm going to go ahead and lift him, put him under the can, OK? And see, I don't even remember where they were. I'm going to, I have to decide, do I want this one under or over? So let me put it over first. And this is just going to be a bunch of, you know, just moving it around until you get it how you'd like it to be. And let's see, I got this little fella here. So these two are the same. You could put them near each other, but I'm going to put mine over here, I guess. And then I've got one more, and I'm going to stick that one up there. And I think I will put it behind the big one. Oh, and I'm a little too close there, so I want to come over a little ways. Um, oh, and i got a dot here. Okay, so if I have my flowers about how I want them, I want to make sure I can see my can. So I'm going to put, lift this and put that under the can. 
And I've got some leaves of different sizes. So this is a big leaf. So I'm going to, let's see, put that. In, and I'm putting it part way under. And I'll try that out. And let's see if I go there and try that one out. Maybe I want it to tilt a little more. I want to make sure I stay away from that edge. There we go. And I want to have some green in, in this area to kind of break things up. So I think I'll use a smaller one. And now I have another big one over here. So I'm going to Stick that, oop, let's get it up that way a little further. And let's see. And I might put that one over the watering can, but I can decide later. I'm not going to do anything. I mean, I'm not going to press anything until I have it exactly like I want it. So if you're not sure, put it together like this, wait a day and, and see what you like. I think I got more leaves than I than I had before. Now see I seem to have like three leaves going the same direction. So let's try going. That way. And I still have these two pointing the same, so that that doesn't appeal to me. So I'm gonna lift up the flower. Oh. Now what I don't want, and I'm not sure if you can see it or not. Let me put this up. What I don't want to have is, see that little space right there? I really want to try to avoid that if possible. If I was going to have a bigger space, then I would, I would go bigger. Because I have to stitch in that little space, so I don't want to have it so small that my stitches are on top of each other. So let's try that. So now the space is covered. Now they uh, they do make in the in the in the store will have or you can order it if they don't. They do make a special pressing mat that you can lay this all out, not on your block, and give it a light press where everything sticks together and just peel the whole thing off and, and um, set it on your block. So whichever way you want to do it. And, oh, I know where this last one goes. So I wanted to put a flower inside, and I cut part of it off, but I don't know how much more I'll need to cut off. And I wanted it to just be behind the watering can, and I don't want it to show a lot, so I may cut more of it off. And I don't really have to. I mean, it's fine the way it is. So maybe I'll have it shown a little bit. And then I thought, well, it'd be kind of cool, cute, to have the leaf coming over the watering can. So I'm not sure if that was the same as it was before, and I'm still undecided about this fella right here. Well, maybe I can go back to having him that way. Though it looks like, a, looks like an antenna. Here, let me come over this way a little more. So there you have it. Um, and then when you stitch, the, the, the theory of the, of behind stitching your applique is, and I'm not sure I want this leaf um, on my watering can or not, so I'm going to stick it out here for now, though I do kind of like it. And I can stick it in further. There we go. So what you really want to do is, Whatever pieces are the closest to the background, 
Um, I'd say put down first, but I didn't put them literally. I didn't literally put them down first. So, for example, this leaf is under these flowers. So this leaf would get stitched first. This leaf would get stitched first. So this leaf, this one wouldn't. It's over the watering can. This one, mm, let's see. I'll have to, th I'll have to think on that one, how I want that to be. Let me do... So I'm going to go ahead and move it away from the watering can over there. Okay, so you see this leaf is under this flower, but it's over this flower. So technically, you should do the ones that are under before you do the ones that are over it. Now, once you get a little better at your applique, and you may already be there, you can go ahead and, and for example, this leaf. So if you want to do all your greens at one time, you can go ahead and start, make sure, you, and always make sure you lock, stitch around, and lock again. So you can go ahead and stitch around um, before this flower. You just need to know that when you get to the end where the flower meets the leaf, you just want to get as close as you can without going over. The advantage of doing it the leaf second is when you come around with the flower and you stop and maybe you're a, a thread or two before the leaf, when you come around stitching the leaf, that will get covered and you'll be fine. And then of course, all of your centers of your flowers would be last. And the watering can, except where, so say I've got these two leaves. I'm going to come around the watering can. So I'm going to start here, come up around, go around, and I'm going to stop here, lock my stitch, pick it up again, lock, start, come around, and stop here. So you need to find a place where you can start and stop the least amount of time. So I wouldn't want to uh, start here, for example, come around, stop, come around, stop, then come around again, because I'd be coming back to a place that doesn't really have a stop. So you just want to kind of pay attention to, okay, here's, the, here's where my breaking point is with the, with the leaf and the watering can, so I know I can start there, keep going, I'm going to stop at this leaf, start, and keep going again. So I'm only starting and stopping twice. When I do this inside part, and I would do my flower first, but when I did the inside of the can, I'm going to start here because this leaf is over. I'm going to come down around and stop. And then when I do the inside of the handle, I probably pick one of these corners maybe, come all the way around and up and stop. So I'm going to do that in one, one motion. So um, you can use your... Um, Let's see, your uh, button, uh, what do they call it, buttonhole, a blanket stitch. You can use the several applique stitches. Um, you could use a zigzag. You could use um, uh, even a straight stitch, depending on what machine you have. And also, you have choices of threads. So you could use your sewing thread, which will be a little, you know, thinner. You could use machine embroidery thread, which would be a little bit thicker. I'm going to be using the um, Tula Pink, because this is Tula Pink fabric. Oh, oh! I was going to say, I knew, it, I knew I could see it somehow. But I'm going to go ahead and use these. These are all variegated. Oh, let me get so you can see it a little better. These are all variegated. There we go. And I'm going to choose these. What I'm going to do, in, the, in my case, is I want my stitches to show. So I'm not going to put the pink with the pink. I'll put the pink with this pink. I may put, um, a, the yellow might be okay, but I, whatever I pick, I want it to show. So I've got another kind of orangey color. I may use this blue one going around my uh, watering can, and this pink, even though I said I wouldn't use it, I think it's dark enough and different enough that it'll work around here. So I could put pink 
around all of the flowers. And I could put the green, the green's over in the corner, around all of the leaves. Or I could mix it up and put some yellow. Uh, there's this one is kind of a corally color, I think you can see in there. So I'll determine what I'm going to do as I go along. Because I might not want pink on every flower. And then again, I may decide, well, yeah, that works OK for me. Because there's, there's so much busyness in the fabrics that I may want to keep the color of the threads simpler. So I'll have to decide that. And since I'm doing this video a little ahead, by the time you get your block, I'll have mine all stitched in, as a sample so you'll be able to see uh, what colors I did to kind of help you decide what you want to do with yours. So have a great time. And this thread, let's see what we got. The thread, um, how about the thread and the applique pressing sheet will be um, on sale for anyone that mentions block of the month for this block. Now I just got to let the boss know. Just kidding. Okay, so thread and applique pressing sheet. They make a, a, a big one if you want the bigger one or the smaller one because you want to use your applique pressing sheet when you're pressing things down so none of the glue gets onto your iron. Um, you don't need to put the applique pressing sheet underneath because you've got your background fabric to take care of that. So I hope, let me get this out of the way. So I hope you enjoyed doing this block and have lots of fun with the applique. And if it feels a little overwhelming, just do a little at a time. And save, your, save this guy for last. I think that'll be fun to zip all around that. It'll be a fun, a fun last thing to do. So have a great time. See you again.